we get into the video today, I need to give you an audio warning, and that is the wind is a total, total mongrel. And so persist through the wind and you will enjoy it. But my apologies. What's cracking everybody? Ralph here and today we are at what's the beach called? Dundaran Beach. Dundaran Beach. Doesn't get much more Aussie than that, does it? Dundaran Beach. Just out of Harvey Bay where we've been hanging out and there's currently some fire happening right on the horizon which is going to create some really thick smoke so as the sun goes down it's going to go bright red and we are now going to walk to our deaths across a very treacherous channel where we're just hoping there's no bullies lurking or um, old men in budgie smugglers so the idea today is to use some of these undulating patterns to create some foreground because as I've been pondering my ability as a photographer, I think the thing I've underestimated that I need to work on is foreground. So today is foreground day. Welcome to foreground day, everybody. Dundown Beach is nuts. We were half hour off low tide and that glassy finish that was really shallow with all those undulating sand bumps stretched for two and a half kilometers. That's one and a quarter mile. Now the tide rises four meters. That's massive. Down on the Goldie, it's like two meters is a king tide and floods half the place. But four meters, it's crazy. And there's no dry patches at all. It's just flat, thin layer of water sitting on the surface as far as the eye could see. This is brutal on your feet. It's like one of those massage feet things, you know? You go to the shopping center and you never done it actually I just looked at them but right now if it's anything like this I know why I've never done it it's quite quite painful this is my first time vlogging on Nikon's ZFC and it's a really good vlogging camera it has some other challenges but I'll get to that in a future video which might help you I just acquired a brand new lens this is a 14 to 24 with an f-stop of 2.8 that is perfect absolutely perfect for conditions like this because I'm going to put it super super wide which is called ultra wide I'm going to photo stack I'm going to capture some beautiful patterns on this uh, this muddy watery correlated ground that will hopefully um, inspire you with an image that I get so I'm on my way Again, now, again, again, now, again, now. <laughs> expert tutelage. We're looking for leading lines in these uh, raised areas, you see. So what I've done is I've found myself some leading lines and watch what happens when you put it on ultra wide. You see? These lines on either side lead in. But remember what our focus was today? That's right, our focus is foreground. So if it's foreground, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the foreground in the bottom two-thirds of the shot. Yeah, so the sun and the sunset, which will be this beautiful red blazing ball of fury because of the smoke that's coming from over there. Because of that, there's no cloud. Well, there's a tiny bit of cloud, but it won't make a great deal of difference. So the beauty will be in the reflections and the color that I get as it screams up to the lens. But I'm gonna have to photo stack it because it's very dark in front. This bit's very dark and then it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and completely blows out as it hits the sun. Super, super white here, super, super dark here. A massive dynamic range it's called. And so I'm gonna to need to adjust to probably five stops. I'm gonna to have to shoot. So that's five increments from the darkest part of the image to the lightest part of the image. You have to balance both those extremes 
if you want to get a well exposed shot. As that sun comes down, the, the glare and the brightness and that the thing I keep showing you that you hate me because I'm showing you, that is going to calm right down. It'll be a nice orange, it's going to feel really warm and the, uh, the patterns are going to look spectacular. That's my hope anyway. So when I'm bracketing, you can do it automatically through some cameras. I like to do it manually. When I bracket, I like to take three shots of, of a dynamic range. So you have the mid, you have the uh, overblown out, so you pick up the shadows, and you have the, uh, the um, dialed into the shadows, which means you pick up the highlights. And then I'm gonna focus stack. And when I focus stack, I like to shoot the closest bit first. So I'll do three shots at the closest bit, and then three shots at the middle range, and then three shots as the sun is where we want it to be um, and then that gives me nine shots maybe 12 if I do four series of photo stacking uh, which will hopefully pick up all the detail throughout now on the shot that I just showed you the bottom third is um, like a lot of detail and then the middle third is some detail and the top third is very little so you want to be mindful of that capture all the detail in the bottom third that may mean a couple of focus stacks and then less as you get toward it being further away because the further away it is the less your f-stop impacts what your shot is and i'm probably going to shoot on an f-stop of 11 for this and then i'm going to alter my shutter exposure based on the shutter so I'm going to open the shutter right up, I'm going to close the shutter right off, um, but I'm not going to change the f-stop, so I'll keep the same focal length and um, aperture width throughout the entirety of those shots. Um, and we've probably got about, about 15 minutes before it gets really exciting. When I focus stack, I actually want the first shot to be the focused on the closest thing to me, and then the second shot to the next thing further away from me, and so on. And when I bracket, I want to shoot the correct exposure and then I want to shoot under exposure and then I want to shoot over exposure and knowing the order of that makes editing later on so much easier. You may have seen that every time I want to shoot a set of images that I want to combine later on I'll take the shots and then I'll put my hand in front of the lens to indicate that that set of shots has finished and the next set is starting. Um, and I just need to sort out this and make sure um, I need, think I need to prop up the camera just a touch, just a smidge, because I think there's too much dead space in the bottom of the shot. And I don't want a lot of dead space in the bottom of the shot. How stunning is that colour and the reflections? Like, are you kidding me? It's so beautiful. What do you think of it? Good. What do you think of that? Mine. Well, it was a lot tougher than I thought it would be, um, and you'll see from the image I'm about to put up. But gosh, what a sky! Is it good? My beard? Probably looks stupid. You can comment below if it looks stupid. Here's the image. If you like this video, um, wonderful. Please subscribe and press the like button. If you didn't, um, I'm really sorry for wasting your time.